Hello and welcome. This is the Think Bamboo podcast. My name is JJ and I'm your host. Today we're here with James Wolf, master of bamboo, directly from Texas in the USA. Hello. Hey, JJ. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Great having you here, James. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and I think we'll start directly with the presentation you have of all the the past uh, project and experience you have with bamboo. Not all, but the highlights but for sure. The highlights, sorry, yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Let me uh, <laughs> try to share my screen here, and hopefully, things will work properly. <laughs> Can you see? Yeah. Looking good. It's loading. Yes, okay. there you go. Great. So this is just a few pages, kind of like the highlights of uh, my involvement with Bamboo Innovation. And uh, so um, let's see if I can advance here. These are, so my background is in industrial design. And um, after I studied industrial design, I went to Japan and Ooh. apprenticed in um, like a master furniture maker area. And then in 1995, I saw I went to the Bamboo Congress in Bali and I saw wood <laughs> made <laughs> from bamboo and I thought, wow, um, how super cool. Like, can we make wood from bamboo? And that was and, early, uh, right? 1995. That was 1995, yeah. yeah. So it was about four years later that Taiwan caught on and you could buy a turnkey bamboo flooring factory for about a million bucks or something wow. like that. But when I was doing this, it was before that, and it was Vietnam, it was very primitive. And uh, I was just, I got really fascinated to see if I could make wood from bamboo. And um, yeah, it was early. <laughs> Way Super too early, early, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like pioneering the, the, the uh, bamboo wood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and like like I said, we couldn't buy machines, so I actually had to use my industrial design background and like make our own machines. Um, wow! And this was also very early in Vietnam. You know, recently Vietnam has become a huge uh, furniture manufacturing powerhouse. Country. Yeah, yeah. But this was really early. We, uh, you know, when I said I needed metal, they said uh, for you know for cutting bamboo blades and stuff. They said, oh, the best metal you can get is United States tank axles. <laughs> Recycling, <laughs> like recycled material or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it was tank axle. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure that's good steel. Um, <laughs> so um, that was, um, you know, the beginning was I went from being a furniture maker, woodworker to, hey, can we come up with a more sustainable kind of wood and can we do that from bamboo and um as soon as we started make, getting boards we um made a contact in america for bamboo flooring so we'd make the boards and glue them together and then machine them and get the quality control for the tongue and groove and we were able to uh successfully export the very first um container of bamboo flooring to america wow and a lot of manpower from vietnam probably right well it's a lot of handling a lot of a lot of handling pieces of bamboo to, to get the final product yep wow um <laughs> so cool and so we had a facility we we're american guys it was myself uh in the picture on the bottom that's me in the pink shirt and then my really dear friend doug lewis in the blue purple shirt and Doug had started this. Doug's mom, Daphne, is a, is a big bamboo person, spokesperson, advocate. And uh, Doug started this, and, I, and we, you know, we were both 25 years old and <laughs> on a mission. <laughs> wow. Um, then then um, Bamboo Living, like uh, David Sands and those guys and Maui, uh, they... We, we built a relationship with them because we had a factory in Vietnam and they wanted to build prefabricated bamboo houses. So, um, that was in the 90s me, too. 
yeah, 96, I believe, is when I started doing this. Um, and that's a picture of me on the lower left, like a, a much younger me, more than <laughs> half my life ago. <laughs> um, so the thing was to to build these houses in the factory in Vietnam and then disassemble them, put them in containers and ship them to Hawaii and put them back up. And um, wow. that was super interesting and super gratifying to, to put up buildings like this in America. Um, one notable, um, really exceptional thing about Bamboo Living is they went through the uh, the the a process of getting bamboo accepted as a building material in America, and more specifically in Hawaii, where uh, buildings need to be able to withstand 175 mile per hour wind loads. Mm -hmm. So the engineering and the kind of um, testing that um, goes into it, you know, for them to go to the building commission in Hawaii and say, we're going to put one of these up and for mm -hmm. them to say, yeah, we'll stamp and approve it. <laughs> so that was um, a huge milestone in bamboo construction. Wow. Cool. So there were no prior, no bamboo or no prefabricated bamboo houses in Hawaii. Uh, there may have been, but this, um, this one actually could get building codes, like was was allowed to build it, and um, that yeah. was, that that's something that only was... Bamboo Living has done. I think even till today, Bamboo Living is the only bamboo house company that can build houses legally in America. Well, wow. that's interesting. <laughs> and uh, yeah. the bamboo actually, it, it has to be a specific type of bamboo from a specific location in Vietnam. So a different kind of bamboo from a different, or the same bamboo from a different place would Doesn't not work. be approved. So um, there's a couple of really amazing species of bamboo in Vietnam. Well, wow. um, having had the experience of prefab, um, I also set up a prefab house production in Bali for Ibuku. Uh, Ibuku's factory is PT Bamboo Pure, and um, one day I just called them, spoke to the GM, and I said, <laughs> I felt kind of bold at the, that day, and I said, hey, you know, this is me, I've been doing this for a long time, what do you guys need help with? And the GM of Ibuku said, uh, we'd really like to set up a prefabricated panelized house production. And I said, I can do that. <laughs> and so um, wow. <laughs> set up this similar kind of thing using designs that they had worked up and cool. uh, had a really interesting time in Bali. And what is it like, tiny houses size or? or, or... Uh, yeah, these are, these panels are about, the, the biggest is about three meters in one direction. So. It's like a small house, like a auxiliary house. Um, it is big enough to do a loft and a kitchen if you wanted to, but mostly like for resorts where they might have their property and they will, you know, custom build some unique architectural design for their restaurant and their reception and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe they'll want 20 bungalows and this kind of makes it easy and quick to prefab them. Yeah. Cool. And that was the, the purpose of this uh, project. Um, then while I was also, you know, when I was working there in Bali, they had a project to build a new gymnasium at the Green School. Mm -hmm. And this was just absolutely huge. Um, absolutely like one of the biggest, probably the biggest building ever made in bamboo of this type with without trusses only curves and, and arches and um the architect neil thomas who was to approve it you know do the engineering and sign off on it he said uh you know it, it's his <laughs> his responsibility to make sure it's safe so it's, yeah i set up these tests to test single poles bundles of four bundles of six uh, different kind of strapping and 
um, different like pipe joints and just testing every single way to uh, improve a bundle. Mm -hmm. And this is like the this was the main element for for the arc for the arcs for the arches. Yeah. Wow. And so it started out <clears throat> where one of these, you know, like first one pole and then four poles and then, okay, four poles isn't going to be strong enough. And then six poles and then gradually making like testing it until it breaks, studying how it breaks and then improving the composite of the structural beam until it could hold six tons over an eight meter span oh. and uh, te testing in uh, both when it curves up and curves down, you're testing the compressive or the tension side. Mm -hmm. And um, on an arch, like if a wind blows on it, parts of it are under compression, parts of it under tension. And so once I could get more than six tons of weight on one section, um, then Neil said, yeah, um, I'm convinced, you know, that uh, you can go ahead and build it now. <laughs> <laughs> wow, cool. Um, That's amazing. Yeah, it's it's a fun job. I mean, just uh, building it, breaking it, recording the, uh, the, the modulus elasticity. One of the most important things to get from this, if you see the guy in the red shirt, mm -hmm. there's a string. And he's measuring from the top of the uh, element to the string. Yeah. And then every time we'd load it, we'd load an increment of, let's say, 150 kilos mm -hmm. and then measure again and then load another increment of weight and, and measure again. And that gives like the actual modulus of elasticity so that it can, that this structural element can be plugged into the computer programs to see how the building is going to perform in earthquakes and, and winds and stuff like that. Mm. So um, once the testing was done, they said, hey, James, do you want to build it? <laughs> <laughs> actually, things, actually, it was COVID, right? So <laughs> people, people weren't lining up to buy the prefabricated buildings because it was COVID and Bali was entirely shut down. Wow. So I was there and they said, do you want to build the gym? Uh, and I said, sure. So um, a lot of my work had to do with the construction sequence because you mm -hmm. have these giant arches and then like the architects designed it, but they don't think about what order to put them in. So I had a model and I'd say, okay, you know, this, these ones, and then this one, and then this one, and then oops. Uh, I can't get the next one in because the ones that are already in uh, won't allow it. And so I spent a couple of weeks working on the sequence um, to, you know, do you build it from the inside or do you build it from the outside? Do you start in the middle? Do you start at the ends? Until I came up with a sequence of placing these giant arcs uh, together to build the building. Um, and then another thing was... Uh, we, I really thought we had to have a crane. You know, these things are so huge. And then mm -hmm. you're paying daily for the crane, which is a lot. So I was like, we got to have all the arcs made. And we had a, like a, a soccer field in front of us. Like, we got to fit all 18 of these arcs on the field, <laughs> like in one location. So what, nesting. Uh... Like, like, you know, nesting, like, you know, piece of IKEA furniture coming out of the box. No space wasted. Uh, yeah, and yeah. then, like, as we pull them up and put them on the building site, you know, then um, managing the space that we had to work so that we could get it up. We ended up having the crane for 14 days and we had all the pieces up in 12 days. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Um, it was a super amazing project, you know, just super grateful to have had the opportunity to to build this building. Um, had yeah, no I idea from the beginning how incredible looking it was going to turn out. It's it's amazing how it looks. I mean, it's just uh, 
really very cool. <laughs> um, yeah. it's, it's super cool. So one of the 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 kind of like the fundamental thing about this design, which is a uh, an idea that was um, put up by York Stam, was um, an anti clastic surfaces. So it's like each surface is anti clastic. It means it bends in two directions, kind of like a potato chip. Mm. Um, in a lot of construction, you're you know to make it stronger, they're like more cement, more yeah. rebar, yeah. more yeah. material yeah. equals stronger. <laughs> But in the case of this building, it's actually the shape. You know, these are really just skins of bamboo splits and bamboo. It, it's not that thick, but it's this mm. anti-plastic potato ship shape of bending in different directions that give it strength without uh, the mass. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, and and do you know how much bamboo went there, or is basically uh, just a lot of giant bamboo, right? Um, so <laughs> there, there's the bamboo poles, which uh, you know all the arcs that you see were were this this bundle of six, like you see mm -hmm. on the lower right. Yeah, yeah. And then there's the grid shell. You can see it here on the model. Mm -hmm. And those are splits. Yeah. And then. Uh, over the splits, you have um, uh, flattened bamboo, esteria, or mm -hmm. uh, plupu in, in, you know, it's the flattened sheets. Yeah. And those boards were over the splits. And then on the outer surface, it's shingles, basically uh, bamboo shingles. Bamboo pieces then, and, and probably between the shingle and the, 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 the other bamboo, they had like some sheet, uh, which is... Uh, for yeah. not to not enable uh, the water humidity to pass exactly. from one side to the other <laughs> precisely yep a uh, a waterproof membrane membrane exactly yeah, yeah. okay cool yeah. cool um interesting in i like bicycling uh, it's it's my favorite sport activity um and in 2008 uh i said, hey, man, I really want to make bikes. And I know, you know, with the skills that I have that I can make really nice bikes. So I found a partner who um, who I could work with because I'm living in Vietnam, but, you know, I, my market is going to be America where yep. people spend money on this stuff. So uh, the guy on the upper right here is Nick Fry. And I sent a letter to Nick because he was actually – he was a professional bike racer, but he was a student at Princeton studying mechanical engineering and aerospace. Wow. And he he is one of his projects in school was made a bamboo bike. And mm. I don't know why, but like, you know, he wrote back. <laughs> Nick wrote back. <laughs> uh, and so we developed very quickly uh, race bikes, like a lot of kind of back and forth. And um, we developed we decided he approached it like a like an engineer like he would look at the engineering numbers of bamboo like the stiffness and the radial compliance and things like that mm -hmm. and just on paper he's like man this would make really good bikes and i kind of knew they'd make really good bikes too and so the partnership was you know i'd make the bikes we'd co co collaborate on the r d and he would he would sell and design them so every single bike we made was custom designed to fit the owner, kind of That's like cool. having a suit made. Um, tailor made. And, <laughs> tailor made, yeah. Every single bike starts with a blank piece of paper. You know, the top tube you need, the length, the cockpit, the, the geometry, all that stuff so that it fits you really, really well. And um, we wanted to make bikes for professional racers because – uh, most people are going to think that bamboo is a novelty. Most people, even those who make bamboo bikes, are kind of like greenwashing it, saying it's the greenest bike, you know, save the world, buy it for that. Yeah. But we wanted to build bamboo bikes for racers to show that from an engineering perspective, this is a really, really good high-performance material. 
And so not just the weight of the bike and all that, but also much other uh, differences which are, uh, at the end, uh, give you a more um, like, uh, well, it's like a better bike, right? Less exactly. vibration, stuff exactly. like that. Exactly. Yep. So the handling is better. Mm -hmm. uh, the And the the comfort the ride quality and the compliance so bamboo is viscoelastic and viscoelasticity is the property of turning vibration into something else and, in, and it actually turns it into heat but it's it's so minute it's not like the frame gets hot but yeah. <laughs> the energy changes states mm -hmm. mm. and so energy that is motion changes mm -hmm. state and the motion and vibrations literally disappear and that's beneficial in gravel racing uh, more than any other kind of racing. Yeah. Um, if you are riding 300 miles or maybe for 14 hours on gravel, you're mm -hmm. going to feel fatigued. Yeah. And this fatigue is going to have an effect on your finish time. Uh, when the bamboo is working for you to keep you feeling really comfortable because it's absorbing shock and vibration, then you know, after the four or five hours when the person who might be on a bike that's a few grams lighter is feeling horrible because it's a harsh ride, uh, you get into the eight, nine, ten hours of racing and the the guy on the bamboo bike is feeling fresh, is really happy, is comfortable, still powering away. And um, the boot bikes have, have won numerous um like high caliber racing events, uh, even winning first place in races like the Crusher and uh, the World, the Gravel World Championship. So, um, you know, the takeaway here is that it's not, this wasn't a pursuit to, to be green. This was a pursuit to show that bamboo really has some terrific properties that can be applied in a high tech realm. Um. And the, probably it's like the carbon footprint I could imagine is like lower than a, a classic, uh, what is a, a high tech classic bike, aluminum, carbon, carbon or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you compare, if you compare bamboo to steel, steel is 28 times more energy. If you compare bamboo to aluminum, it's about aluminum required about 400 times more energy. And if there you compare you <laughs> to carbon or titanium, it's about a thousand to twelve hundred times more energy. Wow, um, that's massive. But that's <laughs> only material to material. Mm -hmm. And you know me, like I want to be honest about this. You know, when you include rims and spokes and spoke nipples and cables and components and tires and bar tape and all of this stuff, it's it's negligible. You know, mm -hmm. yes, bamboo versus titanium is a huge difference. But at the end of the day, you need to build a whole bike and it has to have all these components. And so the 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 carbon balance or the the embodied energy of an entire bike, including all its components, um, is not a claim that I would stand behind. Mm -hmm. So. That's my my point. You know, I would say buy, buy the fair. bike and ride the yeah. bike because it rides great. Exactly. Not, not because, because it's... you're saving the world. Yeah. Yeah. Or 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 uh now the the big thing which everybody is sequestering carbon, which uh has always been a thing, I mean, but now is like the big thing, right? I mean, the plants need carbon to grow. If there is no carbon, the plants won't grow. <laughs> it's it's part of the cycle, right? And now everybody is sequestering or wants to sequestrate carbon. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, <laughs> well, I think that we're still putting enough carbon out there, you know, with with burning coal and running cars. Um, Probably. I'm not yeah. worried that the that the plants will be like. <gasps> <"There's no carbon." laughs> not now. Not right now. Probably not. <laughs> so back to furniture. I, I was doing furniture before bamboo, doing wood furniture, and I love furniture. I really enjoy the design and the building process. So 
Boo Hugger is uh, my brand, and I, mm. I design and make these products, and I ship them to America and warehouse them, um, specializing in outdoor showers and outdoor uh, you know, garden furniture. Um, and this is the special bamboo type you you have you source from Vietnam, mm -hmm. right? The one which yeah. is not hollow or almost not hollow. Yeah, it's very very solid, very thick walled, very hard, uh, very stiff, very low in sugars and starch. It almost never gets infected in any kind of infestation from mm -hmm. bugs because there's just no food in it for bugs. It's just huh. lots of of um, silica and hard fiber it doesn't have the starch and sugar so it's a atypical bamboo out of the 2000 and something uh, different bamboo yeah. types it's it's really a special one <laughs> yeah it is um of the 2000 types of bamboo i just think there's about five that are that are good you know good and have good commercial value mm -hmm. and of these five vietnam has two of them and um that's why, you know, I, I've spent most of my life in Vietnam, I spent 27 years in Vietnam. And um, I don't just source the bamboo, but my wife and I, we own several plantations where we grow this stuff, this, this, this solid awesome. Vietnamese stuff. Um, it's Very amazing. Cool. I mean, I love all bamboos, but this stuff is just exceptional, just blows everything away. So if you're looking for any of this stuff, you should go to boohugger.com. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> thanks for the plug opportunity um yeah so uh i'll move along to architecture um my earlier architecture was a lot of it was prefab and some on site but over the past few years uh just doing a lot more on-site uh construction and design so um these are all very recent projects. These are all things that I've built in the past couple of years. Uh, most of it is in Costa Rica. Uh, Costa Rica is a, a destination um, for people who are into health and yoga and spiritual stuff and healing. And um, that same group is very open to live with bamboo, which is mm -hmm. really nice. They, they appreciate uh, people who are using natural materials. Um, so the uh, the upper left one is a space at um, a retreat center that uh, was designed together with um, Arquitectura Mixta from out of Mexico. And uh, I went down there to do a workshop. And the first thing we did was to build this one um, to kind of build skills amongst the local builders mm -hmm. and um the other photos of the uh the gazebo type structure and the yoga shala are buildings that i designed and um went down there worked with the workers and we put them up and how's the the climate wise probably it's also like ideal because it's, it's not really cold in costa rica right it's similar probably to to vietnam mm -hmm. uh, a lot of humidity heavy <laughs> tropical rains and yeah. um and heat and heat yeah, <laughs> yeah. so you um, want to have air flow and all that stuff that's probably a big topic there within those constructions yeah airflow and lightweight most of these structures have a kind of like a tent like material as the roof and that means that the structure doesn't need to be so uh support massive. so much weight yeah yeah. And and is that easy like or is that probably shipped from the US, right? Because in Costa Rica uh, that like uh tent material roofing um for the first one that we built, we actually flew a drone around the, the structure after it was built and took lidar um uh dimensioning off of it and then mm -hmm. had it made to fit the shape. Um and then the later ones, I designed a little simpler form, and we had those made in Costa Rica. So mm. those were local. Cool. Um, one interesting thing is that uh, back when I was designing this, um, we were I was over at a friend's house with my daughter, and their kid had this 
this Oculus thing with the virtual reality headset and they yeah. were hooked on it. And my daughter's like, can you get me one? And I looked it up and I found out that it could be used for 3D design and that it comes with a program for 3D design. <laughs> I said, okay, try you know, <laughs> I'll get you one. But, you know, when you're in school, I'm going to be using it. Um, <laughs> so I, um, so this, this building here on the right, you know, with where the people doing yoga was mm -hmm. designed entirely uh, using virtual reality with like the hand controllers and the headset. And that was just cool. an incredible advancement for me, who's used to model making, to be mm -hmm. able to do 3D model making virtually. And the editing and the changes are um, really easy. You know, it's not like breaking apart little sticks of bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can kind of like experience the space you can change the scale. Mm -hmm. And every time I would redesign it, I would build it again. And so, mm -hmm. okay, first we need these V structures and then we need these side straps and then we do this and that. And so building it virtually was, um, you know, preparation for building it in the real world. And that was, you know, an incredible experience. It's interesting. Yeah, so like building it in the real world, you already had built it like... 10 times virtually so you knew pretty well <laughs> everything yeah. right yeah 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 it's yeah. yeah. um, interesting yeah. so i had to be i had to be on site it's it's wasn't a process where you know me as an architect can just like drop off a bunch of drawings and and mm -hmm. that's it um i i i was kind of invaluable on site because i had built this already a whole bunch of times yeah Interesting. Um, yeah. So um, I still do the architecture, you know, and I'm still doing that. Um, got a couple of different projects going on, different clients. Um, it's amazing. Through... You're almost in any, everything, right? I mean, what do you not do with bamboo? Clothing. <laughs> <laughs> Clothing. That's, that's missing. <laughs> Next project. <laughs> um, well... This is our facility in Vietnam. This is mm -hmm. uh, uh, my wife and I run this at Bamboo Master Co. And so we grow bamboo. We manage several plantations. We do bamboo processing, which includes straightening, treating, sun drying, warehousing. And we also have a factory where we do production furniture and home and garden stuff. Um, wow. We also and live there. Like our, our house is right in the middle of the bamboo forest has to be beautiful i imagine <laughs> yeah um that picture with the sunset is is like you know that's my view back home sweet <laughs> sweet yeah. so we keep that going and we're producing stuff um just had a call this morning with a client in europe i'm gonna do some pet beds i made a cute sofa for my cat and somebody <laughs> saw it and they're like that's a great product <laughs> Cool. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. All even the animals, even our animals. pets should enjoy bamboo furniture, right? Yeah. Much better than plastic or, or teak wood or whatever's yeah. not bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, so moving forward, uh, these are just the last two slides here. You know, this is kind of like where, where I want to go, uh, mm -hmm. where I am going. Um, the, fir the first one is, is combining uh, other materials and um, you know earth building hempcrete foamcrete uh, different like an, another material that works really well together with bamboo and that's my that's been my feeling and you know when you talk about or you experience bamboo architecture with people um, they they always like yeah well what about when it's cold what about mosquitoes what about if I want an air conditioned room um, things like that and so that's where I think this uh, this co 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 cooperation this collaboration of these including multi multi material solutions is um, so this is uh, kind of like the next step I'm going to start uh, designing building and seeing uh how it takes form these are images that i 
that I just did using AI. Um, they're not exactly what I was going to build. What I what I intend to build is a little bit more, you know, a lot of a lot of open covered space, you know, with a lot of airflow and out, mm -hmm. outdoor living, and then kind of pods that you can kind of escape into, like like this first picture on the lower left. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting into, and hope hope to get some projects soon. For to, tropical uh, climate, probably, or yeah, like most of my work recently has been in Costa Rica. The past few mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. um, Costa Rica, as I said, is you know attracts people who are conscious and very open and love <laughs> natural <laughs> living and good eating and stuff. You know, health, healthy for themselves and for their minds and for the planet. Um, Costa Rica wants to be more like Bali and it is becoming more like Bali, you know, and Bali has mm -hmm. been a, a center for that type of healthy living as well as, uh, bamboo construction. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's the next step. And then since I've spent so much of my life, like assembling and building in bamboo and, you know, running construction sites, I've stood there like just watching time being wasted. Uh, and especially like back when I was building houses in Vietnam, putting them up in Hawaii, uh, the amount of money people earn per hour, you know, really pre puts pressure on the efficient use of time and uh, the buildings. So um, what I am working on building alliances with and collaborations with tool companies so that I can um, use my experience both in bamboo construction and my background in industrial design and efficient manufacturing is the world needs the world <laughs> needs some some technology that helps that aids in the uh more streamlined and more efficient um methods for for building in bamboo so uh i'm i'm trying to contact and uh make alliances with tool companies specifically with hilti corporation because they're the ones that have supported the base foundation in uh, the Philippines. So they're really into um, advancing uh, knowledge and ability and technology in bamboo to make low cost housing in uh, the uh, sub equatorial regions of our planet. Um, and this is something, you know, I've had so many years of experience on construction sites where um, I see opportunity for speeding things up. And probably there is because I mean, from like most tools we use are not built at all for bamboo construction. Right, right. I mean, like <laughs> in normal construction, you've got you know your nail guns and your cordless drills. That it's like, wow, that really solves a big problem. And now everybody is using that. And in bamboo, we haven't focused uh, attention on doing in industrial design products that, that speed up the process. But um, that's, that's really what I, I'm, I'm trying to get into now. That's interesting. That's, again, total different approach, but highly uh, important at the end of the day because uh, if we can speed up and have real tools, uh, also the end result will, will look probably better and will be built faster. Yeah. Uh, Ideally. Bamboo, cause bamboo is a lot of handling, you know, and uh, and it takes it takes longer. So in countries where the labor rate is really, really low, uh, they can be affordable. But if you go to somewhere where the labor rate is high, the bamboo construction becomes more expensive than conventional construction. And yeah. pe people don't want that. They're like, ah, you know, they think ah, it's bamboo. It should be cheaper. Yeah, it's complicated. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's 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 my presentation. I'll I'll close up the slideshow and move back to our our face to face. Hopefully, without uh, any freezing. There we are. Fantastic. Yeah, there we are. Well, that's a pretty uh, a good um, 
presentation. Thank you, uh, James. Um, Thanks, JJ. And out of those projects, um, which three would be the most iconic projects you have been working on? Um, let's say for the, since you've been working with Bamboo, if you would have to well, pick three. Wow, um, <laughs> iconic. Well, iconic, you know, would have to be the arc in in at the Green School because that building really broke a lot of boundaries in engineering mm -hmm. and construction. And um, after that was built, you can see that many of the kind of top uh, bamboo architects are, are, are doing that now. You yeah. know, that was now uh, about two and a half, three years ago. It was very inspirational for a lot of other people. Yeah, yeah. it was yeah. huge. And, you know, I, 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 the subsequent building that used that same technology aren't as big mm -hmm. but um there's value you know there's value in putting the blood sweat and tears into the r d and the learning and the testing so that um more people can do it mm -hmm. of course in in the creative process you know there's i try to remove my efforts in it try to remove the ego you know not like i did this i like we're all pushing the ball forward it's you know, a lot of teamwork, right? It's a yeah. lot, a lot. <laughs> and there's been a there's been this new kind of this new like modern bamboo construction. And I think in anything, like you you offer your mind and your chance on this earth to push the ball forward. And you know, when I die, uh, other people are going to keep pushing the ball forward and hopefully <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. I, th I think so. Things, are, things are really going places with with bamboo. Yeah, no, that's for sure. But you never know. I mean, sometimes it, it, the boundary has been pushed, and then it it, it stops like until uh, somebody comes up with a new idea and starts again pushing boundaries. Right? Um, it has happened before. I mean, it has happened with bamboo bikes. I mean, the first one was eighteen hundred something, and yeah. uh, and then like it stopped and now again this is something uh where where people are pushing again boundaries and you're doing uh, i think very uh, specific and very special bamboo bikes with this special bamboo from vietnam uh, the first time i've heard of it which is uh, interesting because uh, mm. as you explained earlier you can drill inside and just leave like the the, the top outside shell which is like the stronger one right uh, yeah you have it over there yeah i have a, yeah. i have a piece of it so yeah. This is this is the bamboo that I use, and it's solid. So this is cut at a node, and of course it's completely solid at the node. Yeah. But this is this is an internode, and that little plug was the hole. So the wow. wall thickness is from the outside to where that little plug is, and so that's a huge amount of wall thickness, and it's also really good material. Um, you know, it's very woody mm -hmm. and very it's solid. It's a very atypical bamboo not at all like most others which are like yeah. typical poles and it's, which... it's really hard it, yeah it's amazing i mean this is this is what we grow in vietnam we have five plantations of this how high I does just, it get uh, um usually we we cut them at six meters six it meters, doesn't yeah. get really big i mean this is about average diameter yeah um about 45 to 55 millimeters is the average diameter at the base. Mm -hmm. And then at six meters, it, it's probably it gets... about 18 to 20 millimeters. So there's a taper. Mm -hmm. uh, then it tapers some more. So I, I think they're kind of about eight meters or so would be mm. the height okay. of it. Um, but it's, it's not, not bad. really tall and it's not really yeah. big, but it's really valuable, I think. And it's probably it's not bad because you get the six meters, which would be like industrial standard size six or three, uh, which fits very well into those eight meters, right? Which is kind of important then if you want to industrialize or uh, however, uh, really uh, like use a lot of it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, almost almost everybody, no matter the length of, of the bamboo, kind of standardizers at six meters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
even even the Guadua, you know, for for handling and for treatment. I understand because I mean we have containers which have standards and they have sizes and things have to be moved from one place to the other. And of course, yeah. if you have standards, it makes things easier. It doesn't mean it's not possible to you to 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 not use a fifteen meter pole or stuff like that. But of course, you'll have to uh, work differently, and uh, yeah. it means more risk and uh, less standards. So uh, yeah. <laughs> when when you're on site and the bamboo's locally sourced, you know, mm-hmm. sure, go go as long as you possibly can. Exactly. But, exactly. That's yeah. a good point yeah 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 there then um there was like the other uh, topic which uh, we slightly um also talked about which was um all this uh, bamboo um a little bit uh greenwashing or or bad reputation where uh sometimes it's uh local um uh, people who say a bamboo is the poor man's timber or or bamboo uh won't work because uh it will um, have a lot of issues uh, with uh, because it has sugars because um, it's not flat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, this is uh, something probably you have been uh, dealing on with uh, uh, <laughs> like since ever, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it's got a PR problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that the the general perception. Mm-hmm. or misconception that bamboo uh, can't perform, that uh, it's inferior, that it's cheap, that it's uh, temporary, is like the largest obstacle for us to overcome mm-hmm. with selling it or, or having success, you know, as in our industry. It's um, a mindset issue at the it end. It really is. It, it, it is it, because obviously you know this bamboo doesn't have all of those qualities that people would associate uh, as a negative. Yeah, um, classic bamboo. So it, it's it's absolutely a, a mental thing, and you know that's why in my work I really I feel. Uh, like I need to prove prove it, like do something amazing, like make a, a, a you know an award winning race bike or beautiful architecture, or I want people to be surprised. I want people to kind of like dispel their prejudice against it and say, "Oh wow, it works," or "Oh wow, it's really strong," or "That's beautiful," and it it did a great job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's a that's a good uh, vision. Like you want to surprise people um, with bamboo positively. Absolutely, that's I think I think beautiful. <laughs> I think that's the way. Uh, mm-hmm. Is you know, you, if you've only experienced something that you know had a pile of dust underneath it, or it split, or it didn't perform, or it rotted, or was just cheap. Uh, the way to kind of erase that is is build on top of a better experience. Give them an experience where, wow, I didn't, you know, I didn't know it could be so functional or something like that. And then slowly you uh, you change its its perception. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and maybe also because where we're now, like the prices of of raw materials have been exploding right in the last uh, few years and um bamboo i think has uh, constantly um been more or less the, the same price slightly um um higher than the, the other materials but um it has a much more um let's say use cases at the end if you use it the right way and and like still a lot of people are like comparing bamboo to steel or comparing bamboo to this instead of thinking oh bamboo is bamboo <laughs> and obviously we can do endless things with bamboo but we have to think and see it as bamboo and not like oh we want to build a building a house and we would build it like this with wood now we're gonna try to do the same thing with bamboo which probably is not the smartest approach yeah yeah and also 
if we look into it like like when I got into the bikes with my partner Nick, he 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 got into it by only looking at numbers. It wasn't just about numbers. sustainability, just numbers, just engineer just numbers. looking at yeah. numbers. Yeah. And he said, Wow, these numbers look really good. <laughs> Strength to weight ratio, um, modulus of elasticity. And then what we found out was people were riding the bikes and say, It's really smooth. Wow, I feel like it's really smooth. And when I made my first bike, I honestly, honestly thought they had repaved the road that day. <laughs> so cool. So I have smooth. to try a bamboo bike. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> so it's something I have to do. Um, yeah. Because the more I, I, I hear about it, the more I get really, uh, I wonder. <laughs> mm, yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, so I think that we, we need to look into where it can really excel. And I think that there's places that we haven't looked into mm -hmm. where, you know, as a component like in space on a space lab or mm -hmm. uh, aerospace. Where Airplanes. They're using it for the noses now. Like you know, coding. the very first airplanes were all made out of bamboo. Yeah, I saw the, your LinkedIn post there. I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The first yeah. airplanes were bamboo. The first the light bulbs. The light bulb. I mean, the the the, the number yeah. of first, but it's because <laughs> it's light and strong and resilient yeah. that they chose it, and mm -hmm. it can come back. I think again, it's this preconception. They're like, ha ha, bamboo in space. No, no, it should be exactly. on Pelican's Island. Yeah, uh, but if you only look at the numbers and you look at the engineering that it can take an enormous hit. It can take an enormous impact and flex and come back and not break and not splinter and not and and re remain the same geometry. So and grow so fast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, that's the other thing, that right? <laughs> now that I'm here in Texas, maybe I'll get in touch with an aerospace company who has some belief in it and not just like <laughs> that that's cool i mean that would be interesting i know a french company who's really into that and and they're doing like 3d printing with bamboo fiber now and yeah. um i mean it, it's it seems there seems to be a business there i mean uh so uh yeah yeah 3d Go printing for it. is def definitely one of the new directions for it mm -hmm. yeah and i yeah. mean also uh, I've I've been um, looking at 3D printing for a long time, and always I thought that the, the bad side there was you need like plastic or you need like some kind of raw material to print your stuff, which yeah. of course makes sense. But if you need uh, like metal powder or plastic, what's the big deal then? It's not so great um, <laughs> because we're back yeah. to the same issues, right? Kind yeah. of um, where does it come from? But if we can yeah. use bamboo, it changes everything. Yeah. If we can also isolate the fibers, you know, if we can break mm -hmm. it down mechanically and pulp and with enzymes to remove the, uh, the, the soft part and just retain the fibers, then the fiber can go in the slurry of a 3D printing mm -hmm. uh, medium. And then possibly those fibers can also uh, benefit. Okay, we're back. We have a slight interruption. <laughs> yeah, your your video froze. I got scared. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> okay, but I think it's it's um um it's time to uh, to um finish, <laughs> yeah. and I think we have some good material. Um, yeah. and it's time for lunch too. <laughs> okay. So, so um yeah, um. I think we 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 talked um about a lot of things. Um I will be adding some um images of your presentation within the blog post. Um because you you've just done so much stuff and so much amazing stuff really. So um I I I uh, would really like people to see um this wide spectrum of of bamboo innovation you've you've been working on. I mean it's it's really Amazing. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, JJ. I, yeah. Of course, you can tell I enjoy talking about the topic. It's always, <laughs> yes, always, absolutely. Always absolutely. excited to talk about bamboo and try to change people's minds, try to put it on a higher level. 
I think yeah. that's you have you've really done it uh, so far, and uh, I'm sure you're going to continue doing it. And let me know when you have a, a new um, uh, findings and new things, uh, aerospace or or uh, who knows what with bamboo. Very happy to uh, talk about it here. <laughs> sure, JJ. Well, <laughs> thank you also for what you do for your podcast and for bringing more attention and. Um, you're people welcome. who are working on it, like myself and all my colleagues, you know, giving them a, a place to share it with the world. You're welcome. Hey, fantastic, yeah. James. So, um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like and comment. Um, um, think Bamboo. And um, James, um, talk to you hopefully soon again. <laughs> all right, JJ, take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.